Hello, this is Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School STEAM Lab. Uh, this is another video in our X Designs series. We're going to do our 3D printed bracelet, and we're going to do it in X Design. Um, the bracelet is a pretty simple extrusion with a pattern tool, and the trick here is getting the size right. Um, my students have to uh, figure out the size on their own usually. Usually I have a whole bunch of the bracelets up in my room. Some of them are big and some of them are small, and we measure them with calipers. Uh, for this particular video, uh, for distance learning, I, what I've done is I've measured a bunch of round things so that students can estimate what the right size would be so that we can try and get a good idea of the right diameter of that bracelet in millimeters. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a pie slice of, if we consider the whole bracelet the pie, we want to make a pie slice. So we're going to go like a V-shape to the center so we only actually need the radius, which is half as big. So here we go. Here is our outline of what we're going to do. We're going to make that pie slice like we're talking about. So that's just sort of a V shape. And the, then we're going to use the sketch dimension tool to make sure both legs of that V are half as big as we want the bracelet to be around. Then in between the legs of the V, in sort of the fair territory of those foul lines, we're going to draw a design. And then once we have that design and we have an enclosed shape, we can extrude it and give it a thickness so it really does look like a slice of pie. And we're going to use a circular pattern tool to finish things off. So this is our outline that we're going to follow. Uh, we've got X-Design open here. Uh, so we're going to start off with the sketch tools. We're going to start with the regular line tool. Create a line. I'm going to click on it. I want to sketch on the XY plane because we're 3D printing and that will be like the build plate. And before I start sketching, I would like to go normal to the surface so that I'm looking straight down on instead of at an angle like this. So I can click on the top of the chair. That's my favorite way to do it. But you can also um, you can also click on the plane here. Maybe before I start my sketch. No, nope. right click would do it still. And then I can get this normal to direction. So I can look straight down from the top. Um, now I can use this grid as an indicator. The grid is 100 millimeters. So if you want to know how big 100 millimeters is, it's about that big. So that's a little too big for the bracelets because the bracelets that we have will deform, they'll stretch, so that I can stretch them over my hand, uh, which is why we always find a bracelet that fits and then measure it. Um, but we're going to use 100 millimeters because I want my students to try and figure out what the, what the size is that works for them. And it does depend on your hand size. My hands are pretty big, so mine would be bigger than yours anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click to start someplace and I'm going to go to the center and then I'm going to click to go away and it's giving me all sorts of references. There's a 90 degree reference. I can see that I'm lined up vertically. I'm not going to really worry about any of those. I don't want any constraints right now so I'm just going to draw my pie slice and I'm still drawing so to stop that drawing I can either hit the green check mark or I can choose a new tool or I can hit the escape key to stop drawing. I'm still inside the sketch, which is good because the sketch dimension tool only works inside the sketch. So the sketch dimension tool is what I'm going to use to make these the right length. And I'm also going to set the angle in between them so that when I make the copies, they line up perfectly. It requires a little bit of math. So when I dimension these, I'm going to go straight away from them like this. I don't want to be vertical or horizontal distance. I want to be the actual length of the line. And then I'm going to click where I want to place that distance, and then it'll convert to a box that I can fill in. So if I want a 100 millimeter diameter bracelet, the radius should be 50. So I'm going to type 50 and hit enter. You can see my grids adjusted. My lines didn't actually change length. But when I put this one in, because they're not, I didn't draw the lines exactly the same length when I drew them, you can see this one's just slightly shorter. It will actually lengthen just a little bit. I was pretty close though. So now you don't have to do this part, the angle part, but if you do it, then you won't have overlap. If you have overlap with these pie slices, what you end up with is like weird points where they don't line up very well and it kind of sticks out where the, where the pie slices overlap each other, um, which is okay, but it's not, not, as, not as smooth looking. So to measure an angle using the sketch dimension tool, I click on the first line and I'm measuring that line again, but then I can click on the second line and then go in between them. So you need this number to be a factor of 360, which means there's a whole number I can multiply it by to get to exactly 360 degrees all the way around the circle. 
So there's a lot of possibilities. The bigger the number you have, the longer the pattern is before it repeats. The smaller the number it is, you have a bunch of little short patterns around the bracelet. So if you're thinking about your bracelet design and you're looking at your wrist and you kind of count up how many you have, you divide 360 by that number and you should get a number that will work here. So I'm going to use 18. So it's 18 degrees apart. Okay. So now this is the point at which I might also just bring back up my, my, my outline and go, okay, did I draw a pie slice? Yes, there it is. Did I sketch dimension? Yes, I did it three times. I have these two that are the same because they're both radii. And then I have this angle in between. So I know that when I multiply this 20 times around my bracelet, it's going to add up to 360. So now step C says design. So this one I want to zoom in for. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to zoom in and I want to really zoom in between these two endpoints here. That's where my design is going to live is from there to there. I don't want to go outside these boundaries because if I go out here and I go out here, then when I make copies, the copies are going to overlap. So my, my design needs to connect dot to dot. Now, the other thing to consider is if I do like a, a spike outwards, and they're like, oh, well, that's okay. It's going out away from the bracelet. But if I'm going in at an angle here and in at an angle here, I've also created a spike when I make my copies right here. So I generally try and go flat on those inside parts. And you can kind of do whatever you want. You can use a straight line tool and draw a straight line pattern. You can use the spline tool and draw a curvy pattern. I'm going to use the spline tool. I'm going to start off straight, like I said. And I'm going to just draw, and I'm actually, I'm going to put it in like a wave. So I'm going to click there, and I want it to stop there. So I'm going to hit escape to stop there. And then I'm going to grab my spline tool again, and I'm going to restart it there. So I can control which way it goes. You also want to be really careful here because um, we, as you're going, you don't want these things to be too tight or too close together. This gap right here needs to be sufficient because if this piece of plastic hits this piece of plastic, you're actually going to end up with not a continuous line when you 3D print, which is what you're going to want. If you don't have a continuous line, if you don't go follow the line and then keep going, then your bracelet's going to fall apart right there. So you want this to be a continuous line that is uninterrupted, it doesn't cross over itself. So let's start my spline tool again, and I'm going to start right here. But say so I don't want it to be like this, where it's like crossing over itself. I don't want it to even be really narrow. So I'm going to give it a little bit of heft there. And I'm going to work it out so that I end up kind of flat there too, because I'm trying to line it up with that side. Okay. So now, if I've done it correctly, it should fill in because it's a closed shape. So I can hit the check mark and I've got this enclosed shape. And if I right click here, I can move it around. And I, now I'm ready to make it 3D by going to features and choosing extrude. So a lot of students don't at this point see what the bracelet's going to look like. So if you're not, if you're not clear yet, this extrusion is how thick on your wrist the bracelet is. So, you know, if you make it too tall, it's going to be like a cuff and it'll be hard to get your hand through. But if you make it too thin, it's going to be pretty, pretty fragile. Um, so you can decide how tall you'd like this to be. You can also just sort of eyeball it like this, or you can type in the number itself. Um, here, that I, proportionally, I don't mind that height. So I'm going to hit the check mark right there. Okay, so now I've got one slice of pie. But I want the whole pie, but I'm not going to make each one. I'm just going to make copies. So that's when I'm going to go to the pattern tool. And I don't want a linear pattern. I want to go around in a circle. The feature I want to pattern is this whole extrusion. So I'll click on it. It'll say extrude one here. The pattern axis is the line that I'm going to make my pattern around. It's the center point that I'm rotating everything around. That's what we mean by axis is an imaginary line through space. So I have to click on this box to set to be start setting my pattern axis. You can see the zero is telling me that that's a problem. I need to fill that in. The pattern axis is the tip of the pie slice. It's that line right there. And you can see because this is instance angle and it's set to 90 degrees, I'm making an Oh, four copies total including the original and one is every 90 degrees but if I go five here it doesn't really change anything because my fifth copy ends up back on top of my original 
So what I need to do to make a bracelet is choose pattern angle and go 360 degrees around. And then this is where the math comes in. So if I remember, I had an angle of 18 degrees and I need to have, have my angles add up to 360 degrees so I could guess and check. What I don't want is I don't want any gaps. So I know that the answer is, is 20 because if I multiply 20 times 18, I get 360. But I'll show you what it looks like when you have a gap by typing in 19 which is one copy too few. And it's hard to tell, but if you look close, you can see that there's actually a gap between those. And this would not be 3D printable because what will happen here is all of these solids will connect on this one singular line and it won't be what's called a manifold shape. It's just the shape that the 3D engine just really, like it might even crash if I try and make this shape. It sometimes just really doesn't like it when things like this don't overlap more than just at a single point or a single line. But if I go up to 20, it's going to line up perfectly, and you can see it gets nice and solid. Um, if you didn't do your angles correctly, you're probably going to need to go a little farther, and you'll have overlap, and then you'll end up with this spikiness that I was talking about where the things don't line up, which is fine. It was perfectly printable. It just maybe does not look quite as nice as if you have planned out your design so that they line up. And you can even do a better job than me. So this looks more like, instead of looking like a pattern and then there's like a seam in between the patterns, you can make it a lot more seamless. But I do like this sort of fire-ish-ness of this design that I've got. So I'm just going to hit the check mark. And that's it. That's my bracelet. Um, a lot of my students at this point will say, well, but Mr. Lewis, where am I supposed to put my hand? Well, the thing about 3D printing as we get to learn about it is, when you send something to the 3D printer, it takes my 3D object and it turns it into these flat slices and it tells the, the printer what to print on each slice. And these flat slices have settings. So in the 3D slicer program, we use Cura because we're using a Lulzbot TAS6. We can do things like say, how many layers we are gonna put on the top layer, how many on the bottom, how many around the outside shell, what sort of pattern to fill in and what sort of density. And so on th this sort of bracelet, I can just say, I only want one shell around the outside. I want no thickness for the top, no thickness for the bottom, and no density for the infill. And so it'll only print this outside surface. So you don't have to hollow it out or anything. In fact, if you do, it actually makes it a little bit harder for me to 3D print. So I want it to be this hockey, pay, hockey puck shape when you turn it into me. I want it to be one nice continuous line that the 3D printer is just going to print over and over again, over and over again, one layer at a time. And it'll print pretty quickly, and I'll be able to send it home to you, and we'll see if it fits. That's always the part that's a little bit hard to, to know until you get it over your wrist. But these are easy to print over and over again, so if you get a little bit too big, you make it again, make it a little bit smaller.